All right, so this is my big stack of utility poles that I was able to pick up alongside the road. Went and uh, talked to the neighbors where these had been taken down. Went through and picked these up to use in my fence project. Now these, these are probably not uh, the best thing that I could have used, but you know what, they were free. And that counts for a whole lot, if you ask me. First thing you have to do is go through and pull all the hardware out of them. One by one, and we'll load them in the truck. At least as many of them as we can. And just so you know, I'm trying to put the better poles in uh, the more crucial locations, um, if that makes sense. So that in the event, you know, in a few years, if I do have to replace one, uh, hopefully it won't be, won't be too hard to replace. That ought to do it for this trip. That's eight loaded into the truck here. They just need six more. So there's two right here for sure that I'm gonna use. A few more laying up in the field and another one over here. So no, they're not all in one place, but uh, I know where they are, so. Hey everyone, this is Andrew at Plainview Farm. And uh, to give you a little bit of an update as to what's been going on over the last couple weeks around here anyway, I have dug about 22, I believe. Uh, yeah, I think it's 22 holes that I'm setting these wood posts in that are gonna be my corner posts that I'm gonna pull my electric fence off of, all my cross fences here for my uh, grazing system. Now I've got two up here by the road, the electric fence is off. So I've got two up here by the road, uh, then I've got another one on the opposite side, and then the rest of them are all internal. But I'm going to get the posts set along um, the current fences uh, and get those all secured, that way I can get this all turned back on and, and back going again. Uh, at least until I need to turn it off to hook everything up. But, like I said, I've got 22 holes dug. I did not dig them by hand. Um, normally, if I only have a couple to dig, I'll dig them by hand. But in this instance, I used the tractor with an auger on the three-point, uh, borrowed an auger uh, from some family, and was able to, to get this done a whole lot easier. So it's one of those nights and weekends kind of deal going through just getting it done as I could, as time allowed and the weather allowed, that kind of stuff. So we'll start getting these posts set. Like I said, I've got 22 holes. Um, I've already actually set a handful of the posts kind of as I went along because I, I set the posts uh, along the alleyway in order to get that all laid out. Um, but I still need to set about 14 um, posts in order to get, you know, to get the job finished. That way I can actually start pulling wire. So I try to get these holes as close to three feet deep as I can, you know, somewhere between 30 uh, inches to, to 36 inches is 
plenty. I'm, I'm happy if I can get that far. Now there were a couple that I wasn't able to get that deep on uh, simply because I started breaking shear bolts on the auger. I was full of rocks. Uh, so I tried to, to get as deep as I could by hand breaking rocks out of there. Um, and one of those is what I've got a short post on the truck here for one of those. And we may end up having to brace this one. I'm not planning on bracing any of the others because it's not going to be a, a real heavy load on these posts. It's just going to be two wires. So I'm not planning on, on bracing them um, for that reason. But like I said, this the short post may, may ha end up with a brace on it at some point anyway. So which one of these do I want to use? I think, I think I'll just use this one right here. It's on the top. that it's plumb at least this way and it's actually leaning back toward the fence which is what we want Let's see if I can scoot the bottom of the post over just a touch So as I said, we want this post leaning back just a little bit because we're gonna pull against it. And even though I'm not gonna put a whole lot of strain against this post, we do want there to be, you know, some room for it to come forward in the event that it does decide to move on us. Drop rocks in and around the post. help get it set in. Keep checking for plum. Kick a little dirt in now. Maybe a couple more rocks. In between the rocks and the dirt, we should be able to get this post packed into the ground pretty well. Sounds like the neighbors got their lawnmower out. I got mine out too. Charles and Bella are up there eating the grass in the yard. One in, 14 to go, I think. 
Anyway, 13 to go. I can't remember. So I'm gonna get the fence attached to it here and then we'll move on to the next one. It's probably gonna be kind of hard to see here, but I'll do my best. Whenever I attach a, a non-insulated wire to a post, I just drive the steeple in a little ways. That way, as the wire flexes, you know, I, I leave room for the wire to move, I guess is what I'm trying to say. That way, as the wire flexes and, and moves around, uh, it it doesn't get stuck in the uh, in the steeple. Now on these wooden posts. I'm going to use these uh, Speedrite pin lock insulators. I'm, I don't know, I have mixed, mixed feelings about these. Uh, I don't know, I've had a lot of broken pins on these, but I think for this they'll probably be okay. Uh, but I guess one good thing about these is you can put them on either a T-post or there's holes up here you can screw them into uh, wooden posts or, or whatever. But like I said, I have mixed feelings about them, um, but I think they'll be okay in this situation. I'm just going to run these exterior screws. Into the post. There we go. That looks pretty good to me. It'll work anyway. So I mentioned earlier that I'm trying to position the posts in a way that if if one of these rots fairly quickly and needs to be replaced, um, it'll be in a position that it won't be that hard to replace. And and actually, I'm trying to put them in a place that they won't be that big of a deal if they <laughs> if they break down. Um, so around this pond out here is where I'm going to put the more sketchy looking posts. Um, as I said, uh, you know, if they last a few years and I have to replace them then, you know, big deal. Um, they were free. I'm not, I'm not too worried about, uh, about that. Um, and, and as I mentioned in a previous video, this is not meant to be a super permanent last 100 years type of situation uh, i'm putting all this in actually in a way that it can be torn down fairly quickly in the event that i decide to uh to do something else so anyway we're gonna put one of our rougher looking posts in this this corner right here of where we're fencing off the pond if i can get it out of the truck Now, this post is one of the longer of all the posts that were cut. Uh, the crew that was coming through and doing this, most of them were cutting these down into like seven or eight foot lengths. Um, for some reason, the crew that cut this one, they, uh, they cut these in like nine or 10 foot lengths.
All right, so it's the very next day. I have the, I guess, next four posts loaded in the truck. Actually, there's one more out in the field ready to go. I've only got five left to put in the ground. And uh, I guess we'll get these put in the ground and then I'll kind of walk you through how everything's gonna be. So let's get to it. Should have done this one last. Oh, doesn't even want to move. I'm going to put a strap around the end of it up here and see if I can't pull it out from the front instead of trying to pull on the back end of it. Probably not, though. I don't know. Might go. Look at that. That worked easier than I thought. This post is a monster. All right. Slowly working this thing into place here. And I do have it tilted back away from the direction in which I'm gonna be applying pressure to it, just like the others. Now we're gonna use our bar again here to try to pack it in a little tighter. I think that's probably gonna be the best I'm gonna get. Okay, we'll kick a little more dirt around it. Move on to the next one, or catch our breath and move on to the next one. Or I'll catch my breath, you're just sitting there. Well, just four more now. That was the worst one of all out of 22. That one was the worst. Whoops. Ah, <sighs> that one's a monster. Good grief, I should have cut it down a little bit. Huh? Run, but I run too slow. Well, that's it. All the posts are now in the ground. That's 22, 22 posts that I got set in the ground. I don't think I should have to uh, brace any of them. I think they're all gonna be just fine. The only one that I might have to brace would be the one up there that's only um, only about 24 inches in the ground. Possibly this one up here that I mentioned before is gonna be my pivot post. Otherwise, they're all 30 to 36 inches in the ground, which is plenty. And again, they're only gonna be supporting two 14 gauge wires. So, not planning on bracing them. But I am going to go eat lunch, cool off, and then we'll come back out and I'll I guess walk you through how this is all gonna work. All right, so I went in the house, got cleaned up, cooled off for a little while, then fell asleep. So it's the next day. Uh, the kind of thing happens sometimes. I will go ahead and walk you through the 
grazing system that I have set up. Again, I've got 22 corner posts set out here now, and I am ready to start pulling wire. Of course, that will be in a later video. But like I said, I'm gonna go ahead and walk you through uh, how this is all gonna work, walk you through the setup here. So if you're a regular watcher of the channel, you've seen me come through this gate multiple times. It's the primary gate that I use to enter into the pasture. And once you come into the pasture over here on the left, there is a corner post. We're gonna have a very long gate that stretches from uh, this gate post where we latch the gate over to that corner post. And, and the reason that I've left such a wide opening, I think it's about 30 feet, um, maybe just a touch over that. The reason I've left that so wide is so that I can turn in uh, with equipment because we are at an angle right here. Um, whenever I planned out the gate around the yard, I probably could have done a little bit better planning. Actually, if I had it to do over again, I probably would, would change it around, but I don't feel like pulling up, especially with all this woven wire, don't feel like pulling up things and changing it. But as I said, that is immediately on your left as you come in through the primary gate here. Then uh, off directly in front of you is what is the pivot post I was talking about earlier on in the video. Um, wire will attach on one of those posts further down here, come up, pivot around that, and then it will go off to the right and there will be an alleyway that runs right up this way. Um, alongside the house and the yard right here to get us to the back side of the property where I have another alleyway that will allow us to get onto the north pasture. So this direction right here, we come down, and again, there's a, a pretty wide space as you first come in. Again, this allows for, for coming in and turning, um, moving vehicles, equipment, that kind of stuff around. I'm gonna have to move the stock trailer before I start putting up wire or else it's gonna be trapped there. But uh, it, again, it allows for moving things around in this area. I'll also be able to set up panels, you know, uh, catch panels. So again, you come down through here. This is the central alleyway. Uh, off to our left, we have a pasture that is roughly uh, between two and three acres. It has a large pond in it. Again, that pond needs to be cleaned out. And off to our right, we have another pasture that's roughly, uh, I think this one's about two and a half or three acres, probably about the same. Most of these are about the same size, but the cows are over here. This is where I have uh, got them pinned up right now, uh, trying to let the, the pasture start growing. Then as we come into our uh, kind of central hub, if you want to call it that, uh, of the, the four main pastures. Um, we have a 24 foot opening uh, right here. Um, the gate will attach to this post. I'll have uh, two hangers right there with, uh, with gate handles, and it'll be the same thing. The gates will pivot from the center um, yeah, I guess you'd call it that. They'll, they'll anchor there and then they will attach on, uh, on these outer posts. But again, these are 24 foot openings. One that goes in here, there will be a wire or two, step, two wires that run from this all the way up to a post I have here alongside the road. And as I said before, this wide gate allows me to hopefully be able to turn in here uh, with equipment trailers, that kind of thing. And it's the same thing on all four of these openings right here, all four of these pastures, same kind of setup. And again, there's a post, the wire will run from here down to this post on the other fence, uh, the opposite side. Now let's move farther on down our alleyway and show you how things go at the end of it. I mentioned I'm trying to let the grass grow everywhere out here. I do have the goats out here. Um, because there's a lot of blackberry, that kind of stuff um, growing out here. So hopefully the goats are staying on top of that. They will pick at the grass a little bit, but not nearly enough to stunt it or cause any problems there. And actually one of the things that I need to do relatively soon is drag this pasture to kind of break up the uh, the cow pies manure that's, that's out here right now. That's been laying here all winter. I've already done that on the north side and it's, it's showing some positive results. 
So this right here is the end of the alleyway right here immediately off to my right is um, the entrance to or the second entrance to this back uh, or this pasture over here on the right. Uh, I, I think I mentioned before that I do have two entrances to every pasture. Well, two except for this one down here on the end. There's only one way in and out of that pasture. Um, unless you want to go through the pond area right here. But uh, this is the second entrance for this pasture. It's only 16 feet wide. There, there's only a 16 foot opening here um, because I have my larger opening down there that allows me to get in and out with equipment. Then right here, this is the opening. It's 16 foot wide to get into the pond. And then we have another post down here that will separate uh, the pasture from the pond. Uh, and the pond again is for watering to give the cows access to watering on or to water on this side of the property. But our wires will have two strands of wire run from this uh, post on down to the other one over there. And there is another gate uh, down there to allow a second access to the pond or to the back side of the pond anyway. Then this right here is our second opening to this pasture uh, on my left. Again, it's 16 foot wide. And then we have a 16 foot wide opening here um, to the the largest what is the largest pasture uh, which is on the end of the property it's it's longer and, and more narrow than the others the others are a little more square um, until you get down here where the pond is and where I have the pond fenced off uh, we do have kind of some odd shaping going on down here but that was mainly because we're trying to avoid any ditches and pond overflows and that kind of stuff and I'll show you how I have this set up for this pasture to allow the cows to have access to water from here. And this over here is our pond. Um, it, it's not holding water exactly how we want it to. Um, it does have a slow leak in it. I'm hoping that I can use the, the livestock to seal up my slow leak. Of course, I need to take care of the trees that are still out here on the, the pond dam. Um, but that's a that's a different video. So here is our access to the pond from uh, this pasture on the end of the, or this paddock on the end of the south pasture here. Uh, it allows, again, the livestock to enter right here, 16 foot wide, roughly. And then our fence is gonna go from this post down to that one right over here along the fence row joining the airport. So this here is the back side of the pond dam. And if you can see right up here is our, our wooden post that will give us a gate to have access uh, to be able to come straight down this fence row and get in here. And of course, trying to look at all of this on camera um, can be a, a bit confusing. It's difficult whenever you're not actually standing out here to get a good representation of how everything's gonna lay and how it's all gonna work but um, hopefully it gives you an idea of where things are going. And then I'll try to, to give another update or run through once I get all of the wire pulled and the fences all built. That way you can see how the system will actually work, how I'll be able to move the cattle from any one paddock on this end of the property to any other paddock on this end of the property using that central alleyway. And again, make sure that they all have access to water and, and the other things that they need. So. As I said, um, hopefully, hopefully if it's not clear, it will become clearer to you in future videos. And I do hope that you found this video to be uh, enjoyable if you didn't find it to be useful. Um, if you did, uh, either of those things, please do me a favor and hit that like button. And if you have not yet subscribed to the channel, um, I would appreciate it very much if you would consider hitting that subscribe button. As always, I appreciate you watching. We'll see you next time. Look at those baby goats. They are loving the dirt piles I made from cleaning out the ponds.